Dr. Leishkoff, you're rolling. You may proceed, sir. Yes, I, I, I would like to see here what, what I'm showing. Yes, now we are on. And we are continuing our lecture that we started past time. And if you remember, we talked about two harmonic motions. So we talked first about periodic motions, any periodic motions, uh, past time. Then we talked about harmonic motions. Harmonic motion is a motion that is associated with trigonometric behavior, say sinusoidal behavior or cosinusoidal behavior. Sines and cosines are called harmonic motion. <coughs> so we have one harmonic motion, x1, which is characterized by amplitude. This is amplitude. Why? Because cosine function never takes values greater than 1 by absolute value. So maximum that this expression can take on is A1. Therefore, it is called amplitude or maximum, so to say. Now, so frequency of this first motion is omega 1, circular frequency. Phi one, phi 1, or phi 1 for Europeans, is a phase shift. X2 is another harmonic motion. And it has a frequency omega 2. Amplitude is A2. But the main thing is that frequencies <coughs> are given, and that means that periods are given. Because frequencies and, and periods, appropriate periods, are reciprocal to each other, as we know. Now I, we started with a very simple example. An example was like this. Period of first motion is 1 three hundredths of a second. So every three hundredths of the second, the first motion or first harmonic motion repeats itself. Now the second one has a different period. Second one repeats itself in every two hundredths of a second. <coughs> the question is, what is the period of the resulting motion? So imagine that x1 and x2 go to discotheque and they are dancing, uh, dance together. Okay, one is dancing with frequency omega one, the other is dancing with frequency omega two. Then the outside person will observe the motion of this entity, new entity, OK? Let us say couple, which is x1 plus x2. And will this be a periodic motion? And if it is a periodic motion, then what is a period of that motion? When, after, naturally that this period, period is not 1 three hundredths of the second. Because first one repeats itself, uh, three hundredths of the second, but second does not repeat itself, say, one two hundredths of the it, it repeats itself in one two hundredths of the second. So in one three hundredths, uh, in one two hundredths, there will be, say, some motion made plus some part of that motion. OK? So I actually solved this problem, and I will present you a solution, unless you would like to volunteer the solution, then you can come and talk here. I will be very, very happy. And we will give you a CD-ROM of your presentation. Maybe we will do that. We will do that. We will do that in the future if there is a presentation by the student, and he or she will get the CD-ROM. We will request. At least I can request. I don't know whether. So look, please. First of all, we see that Say once the first motion may you know repeats itself in one three hundredths of the second. That means that in one hundredths of the second, this motion will repeat itself three times. Okay. Now second one will repeat itself two times in the in this one hundredths of the second. Now. We know also that if t1 is a period, 1 over 300, then 2 times t1 is also a period. 
and 3 times T1 is period, 10 times T1 is a period, because that is some P that continues from 0 to infinity. And it repeats itself after 1 three hundredths of the second. Naturally, it also continues two times this amount and three times, etc. OK, maybe I will depict this. I think I did depiction of, of analogous fact. Say, so maybe I'm not very successful here, but on the blackboard, I'm better. So from here to here, from here to here, so this is this period. So it repeats itself starting every time, like after this. OK? So this is a period. Now, two times this quantity is this time, which will be from here to here. OK? So this one until here. This also is a period because now we start the same picture as it is here. So this is also a period. Naturally, three times this amount is also a period because it will do, uh, where is this? Uh, that is two and that is three. That is three times. So this is also a period because this picture is also repeated. So any integer multiple of the period is also a period. But we call period the smallest of all periods. So therefore, when I said 1, 300, that is a period, means that is the smallest quantity of time in which system is repeating itself. So from here, we see that 3 times t1 equals 2 times t2. And therefore, the period of the resulting motion is 1 divided by 100 seconds. One hundredths of the second. Because we will, after one hundredths of the second, every one hundredths of the second, first period will, first thing will repeat itself three times, second will repeat itself two times. So, and after that, the, the same repetition will occur. Okay? So we see in this particular case, at least in this example, that some of the periodic motions is a periodic motion. OK, at least here. OK, so I did write this in one hundredth of the second. The values of both function repeat themselves, i.e., x of t repeats itself. OK? So the period equals 1 over 100, 100 seconds in, in this particular case. So in this particular case, it was very easy to find the solution by just thinking, which shows that thinking is not forbidden in this course. The opposite is correct. It is encouraged, very much encouraged. Now we can actually think about the following example. Uh, let us generalize this example, generalize. Imagine period of the first motion is 1 divided by a, b. a and b are numbers. And Period of the second motion is 1 divided by CB. You may want to write. And you, you remember, and I would like to remind you that any time you have a question, please, please, please do not hesitate to ask. That is good for me and good for each of us, because I can then try to answer the question. Yes, sir? Does the phase shift? Okay, the question was whether phase shift will affect this behavior. No. Phase shift is actually some where the system, so to say, starts as if. But once this start is occurs, then we talk about repetitions. Sta so phase shift will not participate in frequency or pe period discussion. It is just the same function that is moved a bit to the left or to the right. But then depends on the coordinate system, where I choose coordinate system. So it will not, because I'm interested with where the same maxima are occurring, when this pattern is repeating itself. Thank you. So here I said 1 over AB. Here is 1 over CB. Okay. So then I say, look, please, imagine that this AB 
A, B, and C are integers. A, B, and C are integers. Please write it down. OK, then look, please. If that is the case, then I will multiply this by A, and I will multiply this by C. Then the result will be 1 over B. And 1 over B is a period, because I found, I mean, first one is repeating its first one will repeat itself a times second one will repeat itself c times and that means that af once that happens that that is a period first has to repeat itself a times to get a part or piece that will then start to repeat itself so the period equals 1 over b OK, sometimes so let us come to this um, case. Now let us discuss this case. OK? One, imagine that we have two periodic motions. In one, period of one is 1 seventeenth. You may want to write example, example two or something like that, so that it distinguishes from the previous text. Otherwise, you will have a text that continues, and we don't know when one starts and when one ends. So we may want to write example two. So t1 equals 1 17th, t2 equals 1 18th, 1 divided by 18. So the question is, what is a period? Do you want to volunteer to say, maybe someone? If not, I will deal with this. Paying attention, this is different from what I gave before. Then before that, we had 1 over AB, then 1 over CB. So these were products of two numbers. Then I found easily this thing. But in this case, now I, I go to yet new a case, where these denominators do not represent themselves products of two numbers. I mean, at least 17 is a prime number. 18 is not a prime number. But it is not represented in, in both cases. In the previous case, we had AB and BC. So there was a cofactor, a fac joint factor in the first case and second case. In this case, we don't have this situation. OK, if we do not, uh, if we do not want to answer this, maybe this should be the homework. So why don't we write down homework one? You have this sheet of page. And if you um, just write to yourselves, OK, t1 equals 1 over 17, t2 equals 1 over 18, find t. Find capital T. And let us write, if you do not mind, homework number two. Homework number two is the other exam, other one. T1 equals 1 over 17. T2 equals 1 over 51. <coughs> OK. These are the examples that we would love, simple examples. But uh, by, by thinking about simple things, we can later deal with more complex things. I mean, simplicity is, not, is, is very helpful, usually. OK, so we can actually discuss some more general case in which we talk about, look, please, 
f of t equals, say, sine 2 pi over t1. You may want to write down. Plus sine 2 pi over t2 t. I wrote now not in terms of frequencies, but in terms of periods. Okay. Yes. Uh, now what we are saying is that um, in this particular case, minimum period or just period, we have to find some integers n1 and n2 such that n, n1 times t1 equals n2 times t2. And then this product will be the period. So that t is a minimum, and tha therefore it is a period. Now, n1, OK, um, that, that is what it says. Now, from here, we are also getting paying attention to this expression. Uh, from here, n1 divided by n2 equals t2 over t1. n1 divided by n2 are integers. We would like this n1 and 2 to be irreducible. Irreducible means that they don't have a common factor. I don't want to multiply to, to by big numbers. I would like to multiply by the smallest possible number, so that because I'm looking for the minimum period. I don't want a bigger period for t to be minimum. So this n1 over n2 should be irreducible. Irreducible means no common factors. Now, not only that t2 over t1 should be a rational fraction. Now I will write down what is a ra rational fraction. Can I, can, did you write this rational fraction? So I will, I will write it down. Rational rational numbers are the numbers representable as, guess what, ratios. That is why they are called rational. So when we say he is a rational person, actually it's a very strange expression because we are talking about ratios and what is the connection between ratios and, r and being rational or logical. It's very strange, actually. So it's, we are using very strange, strangely connected words. So this idea, so for example, 3 is a rational number. Why? Because it is the ratio of 3 over 1. Okay, so 3 is a rational number. Whole number is a rational Say 5 is also rational because it's 5 divided by 1, etc. Now, people actually encountered first these whole numbers because when people are starting to count number of bananas on the tree, this number is, is a whole number or number of fingers on the hand. That is also an a integer number. But they also encountered, so to say, some other numbers. For example, imagine that there are three brothers, and this is a one, one apple. Then they did get into idea that this apple should be divided into three parts equally. Imagine that this, this 
children are very nice to each other, fair, etc., and they divide it equally. So one third is also a rational number because it is a ratio. So numerator is numerator is a whole number, and denominator is also a whole number. Now, this idea of rational numbers first was forwarded by Pythagoras. Pythagoras of Samos, approximately 550 before Common Era. Now, Pythagoras said, Pythagoras was a um, head of the religious brotherhood. Okay? And he had this, he was a, you know, there was this brotherhood, and he was a head of this religious brotherhood. So this brotherhood had following principles. God created world via integers and fractions. So that, is, that was their, their, their statement. Now, second thing, everything is a number. So the students of Pythagoras had to take these dog dogmas in order to, so to say, be a member of this, of this brotherhood. Now, what they did actually is, they, Pythagoras had some very powerful friends who were kings in various cities or city, city kingdoms. And they were supporting him financially because he would solve maybe some mathematical problems for them. For example, tax collection or effective tax collection, or effective division of land, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this brotherhood was, so to say, like a cons modern consulting firm, but with high connections in high places. So that, that is what it was. Now, and they were traveling also. They would go from city to city. They would visit this kingdom, that kingdom. They were hosted by, by various kings, and, and etc. So once. They were on a cruise ship. I mean, that is not like modern cruise ship, probably smaller, but they were traveling in Aegean Sea. And then one student, his name is Hippasus. Hippasus of Metapontum. So usually, like we said, Pythagoras of Samos. So there were no last names. There was only first name, and then name of the city where person was coming from. So Hippasus of Metapontum says that he came from Metapontum. That is what. Now, Pita Hippasus told, I mean, during this cruise ship, he told Pythagoras the following. Great master of mine, let us take a right triangle. And this is one, the length of this side is one, and this side is one. Then, according to your great theorem, A equals one, B equals one. Then A squared plus B squared equals C squared, where C is a hypotenuse. So then, we substitute one squared plus one squared equals C squared. So then, this equals two. 2 equals c square. c equals square root of 2. And he said, I will prove you that square root of 2 is not a rational number. So he said, I will prove you, prove to you, that square root of 2 is not a p over q. So it is not a ratio of two numbers, two integer numbers. Okay, not a ratio of integers. 
Okay. So Pythagoras said, oh, please, uh, please go ahead and prove me. I will not reproduce that proof that is very well known. If you will come to my office, if you don't know, then I'll immediately prove to you. Pythagoras was stunned because that would mean that his idea how God was acting is wrong. Because according to Pythagoras, God created the world and deals with the world via rational numbers. That means that every number should be a rational number because these numbers are created by God. Suddenly, square root of two is not a rational number. My student, my, my student, you know, this student comes from Metapontum. I taught him everything. Suddenly, he proves me that um, square root of two is an irrational number. So Pythagoras said that because I, Pythagoras, naturally am right. Uh, therefore, probably what has happened is God made a mistake. God made a mistake. He created by chance, randomly, also an irrational number. So what you do, what Pythagoras said, Pythagoras said, what should we do? Now, we, of course, I was not there. I did not hear the conversation. But we hear what was written by Plato 50 years later. So Plato wrote in his book this, uh, this incident. Okay. So he said, because God made a mistake, we should help God. And we will help God by hiding this, his error. We are not going to communicate to the world the error that was made by, by him. So he told Hippasus, my dear Hippasus, let us hide this and don't tell anyone. And this, this secret of square root of two being a rational number will die with us you know, in an old ripe age. We continue to be rationalists. Rationalist actually means that you think that God created the world by integer numbers and ratios. That is what rationalist means. Pythagoras was rationalist per, par excellence. <coughs> Hippasus was a young, younger person. And also, he was very stunned. But to hide the truth, that was totally unacceptable to Hippasus. And Hippasus said, that is not possible. I'm not going to hide the truth. Truth is the truth, and we have to communicate to the world. And at this point, Mr. Pythagoras did an unbelievably terrible thing. He ordered Hippasus to be thrown overboard. Yes. And Hippasus of Metapontum died. And had not Plato recalled this, this case, we would not know about this. Now, however, Pythagoras did not realize and did not know that, look, please, square root of 1, of course, is a rational number, yeah, because it is 1. So it's a whole, ra whole number. Square root of 2, so that is, that is rational. Square root of 2 is irrational. Square root of 3 is also irrational. He did not know. Square root of 4, of course, is 2 and therefore is rational. Square root of 5 is irrational. Square root of 6 is irrational. Square root of 7 is irrational. Square root of 8 is irrational. Square root of 9, of course, is rational, etc. So what, what I'm saying, what I'm trying to tell you is that most of the numbers are irrational. So humankind as if should have hidden you know, infinite amount of errors as if, as it were, of God in order to help him. But Pythagoras did not know. He thought that square root of 2 was an accident, and therefore, that is how it should be. Naturally, then, we know that pi is, ir pi is irrational number, e is irrational number, and there are many other numbers that are irrational. So these are irrational numbers. Therefore, it's not good, I think, to say we are rationalists, or this person is not rational in a negative sense. It is better to say it's logical or reasonable, but rationality is a is misnomer, actually. But we will come. Pythagoras did so much also in uh, vibrations, in music, etc. So his name is natural to be used in vibrations. So he was actually first person 
who talk about frequencies and periods, etc. Before Pythagoras, this was not known to humankind, these, these notions. OK, if, the re, if t2 is over t1 is irrational fraction, irrational fraction means that if t, look, for example, if t2 equals pi and t1 is 2, OK, then we cannot find this n1 over n2. And therefore, there is no period then. There is no period. So if the ratio is irrational, then there is no period. This two vibrating modes who went to the discotheque to dance together do not have a period in that case. In other cases, if it is a rational, if it is a fraction, and that means rational number, then there is a period. Now, naturally, so that is a theoretical consideration. This, of course, is a theoretical consideration. However, if we will talk about engineering implications, so let us say engineering implication. So we see that, for example, sine pi, Excuse me. Yeah, sine 2 pi over, say, square root of 2t plus sine 2 pi over, say, 70. So it has no, has no period. Is it right? Because 7 over square root of 2 is not rational. Seven divided by square root of two. So do you remember this is t one, and this is t two. I will remind you. Pay attention. So this is t one is in denominator. Whatever stands in denominator is period. Okay. So that is why it's nice to run. So this has no period theoretically. But now, from engineering point of view, engineer always approximates. What does it mean approximate? This is 1 and this is 1. So this is square root of 2. So it's approximately 141, some, something like that. Or maybe there will be more digits taken on your calculator. But your calculator gives some finite number of digits. Because it gives us finite number of digits in, within every calculator, square root of 2 is a rational number. OK? With, with every calculator, square root of 2 is recorded. as a rational number. So therefore, when we do engineering calculation, we will find this period. That will be an approximation of some, something that does not have a period, but it may look like periodic. Computer does not have a chance to write. You know, it, it is not programmed to say, Square root of 2 equals, say, 141, et cetera, other digits, irrational. It does not have this capability. No information is provided about irrationality or rationality, et cetera. It just gives approximation. The same is with pi. Same is with pi or, or e, et cetera. So therefore, within engineering approximation, it will be very difficult for us to detect non-periodic motions. If, if they are sum of two motions, 
So you may want to write. Within engineering approximations, it will be very difficult to detect that resultant of, two, resultant of two motions is not periodic. Excuse me. Resultant of two periodic motions is not periodic. That will be, for, an, for us, will be very difficult to detect. Because if numbers are, if it is not written square root of 2, if it is written square root of 2, I see this number. It's square root of 2. I know it's irrational. But if I wrote say pi 3, 14, 15, and I stopped there. So I don't know 3, 14, 15, 9 is coming from pi, or it is just 3 fo point 14, 15, 9. If it is just number 3 point 14, 15, 9, and then it stops, then, it, then there will be, a, that is rational, because it's a ratio, you know? But if it says pi explicitly, then I know that it is irrational. So unless we are dealing with things theoretically on the symbolic level, so you may want to write, unless we deal with things sim in, on a symbolic level, unless we deal with things on a symbolic level, we cannot detect aperiodicity. Aperiodicity means non-periodicity. Yes, sir? Yes, sir. So it has to do with the degree of significance? Uh, the question was, it, does it have to do with the I mean, degrees of significance? Um, look, uh, yes and no. Yes, because wherever you stop, say you take, say, one significant digit, for example, 3.1 for pi. So then it is 3.1 is 31 divided by 10. So 31 divided by 10 is a rational number. So therefore, we will say it, it has a period, and we will find the period. But then imagine we are stopping later. 3.14. 3.14 is 314 divided by 100. So this is a rational number, because it's a ratio of two numbers. So we will find the period. OK, we don't want 3.14, but we want 3.141. But then it is 3,141 3, divided by 1,000. It is also a, a rational number. So we will find some other period. So that means that irrespective of how many digits we will take, unless you will take all digits, it is impossible to find that periodicity. But all digits we cannot take. Why? Because maybe we are lazy. I mean, I'm, I don't want to take all. But also, we don't know all the digits. By now, we know about, about 1.2 trillion digits. But we still do not know all the digits. But naturally, from an engineering point of view, we will never have a need to have to take into account 1.2 trillion digits. Anyways, they are not known. These 1.2 trillion digits are not known ever anywhere, everywhere. So there is only one place that has this recorded. That is in the University of Tokyo in Japan, so these 1.2 trillion digits. They are recorded there at the university, and they are holding it. And no one requested that, I, please, can you give me? I'm sure that if you ask, they will give you. But what are you going to do with this? I don't know. That's in a string, a computer string that's recorded? Say it again. So a student recorded. is asking, yes. Yes, that is recorded in the, they did, they used, pro, his name is Canada, K-A-N-A-D-A. Professor Canada of Tokyo found this 1.2 trillion digits. It's very important. I mean, look, please. For example, why is it of importance? It has an importance in computer science and engineering. Why? Because we are developing some, say, some new computer techniques. Then we, if our new computer technique does not yield for pi all these 1.2 trillion digits that are known in in, in Tokyo, then our programs are wrong. So that is very, and I, if it is wrong in one case, maybe they are wrong also in many other cases. We may not know. 
So this information is important from the point of view of correctness of the computer, but never natural in practical application. For example, if you want to calculate the circumference of the pizza, okay, 2 pi r, r is a radius. So you will not need tri trillion pages because trillion uh, digits, because by the time you will calculate, someone probably will eat this pizza. Your brother or sister. Or any other questions? OK, we, we, com we continue. So this has to do with periodicity. Now we will talk about uh, next topic. What is our topic number? What is our topic number? Do we, we, we said that we will give numbers to the topics. OK, why don't we give now the numbers? So one was uh, free vibrations. OK, what we did, free vibrations, frequency, period, amplitude. Second, sum of two harmonic motions. Then three, detection of possibility of detection of aperiodicity. OK, maybe four, Pythagoras and Hippasus. OK, so we will add them to this list. Five, single degree of freedom system. OK, so now we are on topic five then. I recommend you very much, when you are writing topics, then now, for example, f you will write very big, heavy five. OK? And then after this five, you continue, so that we, we know actually where we are, what topic, and how to relate with previous topic, et cetera, et cetera. So I will hold this to myself. So now we are in topic five. Single degree of freedom system. So we will deal with free vibrations. What does it mean by free vib? Yes? What is the topic four? Oh, yes. Question was, what was topic four? Topic four is, is Pythagoras and Hippasus. Maybe as told by Plato. You see, naturally, the um, correctness of this story cannot be very strongly ascertained. Why? Because at that time, there was no New York Times or Sun Sentinel or Palm Beach Post, et cetera. There were, not, there were no correspondents who would record things and publish this information, or there were no books, so to say. So and uh, so Plato records this 50 years after it has happened. So he did not hear it. Prob naturally, he did not hear it from Hippasus because Hippasus died. He prob probably Pythagoras actually retained this uh, secret you know, for squ for quite some time. It is quite possible that secret was was broke because other students were present there. Many other students were present there. And the very fact that Hippasus died by this manner led to some of the students maybe to tell the story to other people later. Okay? There maybe they were silent. So 
Plato is recording 50 years later, so it's very difficult to say that yes, that is how it happened. So we should think that it's a legend or story or maybe the truth also, because it is possible that look, Plato is a very famous mathematician and famous mathematicians, so to say, uh, and especially they, they were all in Greece, they traveled amongst different places, and it is quite possible that he did hear Maybe, maybe Pythagoras told to one of the kings who was also, uh, and then son of that king was a friend maybe of Plato later, and that is how he has heard. Maybe Pythagoras bragged about this with the king. We don't know. We, 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 we do not know. Okay, so now we have single degree of freedom system. So uh, paying attention. I'm talking about point mass. Okay. So this M is a, please write it down, point mass. And please make this picture. So there is this wall, and this wall is connected with the spring. And then there is this mass. And usually there is this load f of t. And we are imagining that this mass is vibrating along the vertical axis. OK, up and down, up and down. Now, this is a point mass. As you pay attention in my figure, it is not a point. It is a big, big mass. But I'm doing it for illustration purposes, not, not in order to reflect reality, so to say. Please write down that this is a big picture just in order to illustrate, but otherwise, to write M inside. But otherwise, within the point, I cannot write M. Okay? Now, this spring. This spring behaves in a, in, in a special manner. Okay, this spring naturally is not absolutely rigid. It is a, a elastic spring. It, con it can be deformed. Had it been an absolutely rigid spring, then mass would be unable to, to vibrate, because it would be connected strongly with this mass. And that is it. So this spring um, has the following characteristic. When I apply load F, some load f to this spring only. Just forget now this mass, just spring. We talk, now please write down spring here, spring, spring characteristic. Spring has certain lengths, okay? Then lengths will change by value of u. So this is change.